So we're here to see the actual fixing of this thing, so maybe you don't enjoy the uh, entertainment value that myself and uh, the Duffmeister provide, then go to this timestamp right here and we'll start fixing. Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today, on the second channel, we're gonna see if we can't clear a P0341 cam position sensor code on my 2005 Dodge Ram 3500 with the uh, Cummins in it. So that's right. This thing's been, it starts, then it kind of idles up and down, and sometimes it throws the code, sometimes it doesn't. That's the code I got, PO341, looked online. So it's a little camshaft position sensor that's kind of on the side, lower, bottom, back of the engine. So we're going to see if we can't stick that on there. It looks like you got to take the computer out of the way for the computer-controlled 5.9 liter Cummins turbo diesel. So we're gonna put it on a lift because we got one. And we're gonna get that out of the way and it should be pretty easy. It looks like it's really easy on the not computer controlled ones, but like anything, it's probably not as easy as you think. So let me give you a tour of the tow pig as we call it. Uh, white Ryan, Moby Dick, the big white whale. Yeah, whatever you wanna call it. This thing started life is a 2005 Ram 3500 in gray with a Cummins. But as you can tell now, it's a 2500 in white and it's got a Hemi badge. So my buddy Ryan, he bought it brand new, six speed, diesel, long box, four wheel drive. And he got about 172,000 good miles out of it and ended up upside down one night. So I bought it from him. He'd already jacked the roof up. He took phenomenal care of it. The sill plates in the back still had the plastic in the back seats. I mean, he always took over. Even after he rolled it, he jacked the cab up and vacuumed all the glass out. The worst injury he got was cleaning the thing out. He was pinned underneath it for a while. Um, they had like a black and blue arm is all he got out of the deal. But I bought it from him. He bought something different. He was always going to fix this. He bought it back from the insurance company. I bought it from him. And then I found this 2005 Dodge Ram 2500 three quarter ton gasser, Hemi, automatic, vinyl seats, or not had cloth seats, had vinyl floor mats, roll up windows, basically bare bones. And it was close by and it was a Texas pickup. So I picked that up. We rolled his rolled over pickup in at about 11 o'clock on a Saturday morning. And about 11 o'clock Sunday night, I drove it out. I still had to swap the door panel stuff for the power windows. I think I still had to put the bed on it, but we pretty much swapped everything. And you had to swap, literally the only wire harness left in this pickup that wasn't from Ryan's is the dome light harness. Otherwise, the insulation in the firewall, the dash, all the dash harnesses, the carpet, the seats, all the guts out of the doors, all that swapped. Yeah, we had to have a hoist to do it. Uh, neighbor had a hoist, was gracious enough to let us use it. But yeah, this thing's pretty clean pickup. Like I said, it came from Texas for up here. Ryan's was really clean too, unfortunately. Uh, I sold off a few pieces left. So that was the only way I could get into a diesel with a six speed was uh, to buy one wrecked and a buddy had it. So he gave me a pretty good deal. But yeah, it was a lot of work doing it. So that being said, I don't know, it's just a white 2005 Dodge. It's got, a, it's got a lot of dings and stuff in it. It's not too crazy. It's not too rusty. Nothing too amazing about it. It's just a pickup. Oh, and then he had this front bumper on the pickup that he had after this. But then when he traded that pickup off on a 12, he, uh, he sold me this truck defender because his bumper had the gray on the top to match the body color. And the bumper that came with this had the black on it. It was all faded and crappy. So he's like, you should buy that. And I was like, I got a close incident with a deer and I got this truck defender after that. And we've hit one deer since and it didn't even leave a scratch on it. And I guess that's the third one it's hit because he hit two of it. All right, let's open the hood so we get some light underneath. Let's get the hoist hooked up to it. Duff's already bored. And uh, I don't drive around with my ghost mirrors up. We just unhooked from the 40 foot Lamar trailer which this thing pretty much stays on all the time now. Since we got this trailer, uh, yeah, don't be that guy with your mirrors tipped up. One thing is, I think these are manual mirrors because that's what this pickup had. And the pickup now is power mirrors, but I'm too cheap to buy good Dodge mirrors and I hate the aftermarket mirrors because they vibrate and rattle and so on and so forth. So 
I don't like tipping them up and down because then you got to adjust them by yourself because I'm a loser and I got no friends. And my only friend has no thumbs. You're not a loser. I am. So don't drive around with your mirrors up if you're pulling a ghost trailer. If you're pulling a trailer, it's acceptable. But like even when I pulled the car trailer, I never had these up. Two-place car trailer or the enclosed trailer, we tip them up. Just another one of the things that irks me, kind of like uh, craggers and flexi hoses and such. Ugh, just a dirt ball under here. Need that pudding feller to come pressure wash it. Room, room. All right, let's get this thing up in the air. So I have done a few things, this thing, since I've had it. It had kind of a death wobble, so I put some shocks in it, put a steering stabilizer on it, put a couple belts on it, fan clutch. That still likes to squeal. Uh, I did put a clutch in it and a rear main seal, which, surprise, surprise, looks like it's leaking. Not too terrible. Uh, I rebuilt the front drive shaft and the rear drive shaft. Put a hanger bearing in it. God, those things got a lot of freaking movement in them. It's awkward. Uh, I put tires on it. That's, that's about it. It's been pretty good. I gave her a quick walk around while I was under here. And it looks like we're going to be needing a tailpipe here shortly. She's a little, a little chewy. Spare tire's pumped up. Uh, it had the hitch in it. I was going to put a great big fuel tank in it so I don't have to fill up, which hopefully that ain't leaking. Does that get an oil thrown on it from the pinion seal? Oh, looks like we should probably put a pinion seal in it. Hmm. Awesome. Always something, but I guess it's got 206,000 miles on it, so can't complain too much. We should probably check that though. Uh, I was going to put a I think this has got a 35 gallon tank. I was going to put a 60 in it and they were like 1400 bucks. I was like, that's too much money. They'll go down. Yeah. Another 2000 bucks. Don't worry. Inflation's not a real thing though. Here is the camshaft position sensor we're going to be putting in. This is a standard part number PC 716. There is the ECU that we're going to have to take out of the way. And if you can look straight up there, that looks like it's the connector that we get on hook. And then the uh, sensor goes towards the front of the engine. So you can see why you gotta take the ECO out of the way. So let's do that. Should be a 10 millimeter buzz those out of there. Maybe. They're tight. You know what? That thing just ain't working for us. Ratcheting wrench it is. And by the looks of things, they got way too many bolts holding it on there. I was lazy, I didn't want to unhook the trailer. So I opened the hood and looked at this, I thought. That's gonna be no fun laying on my back to take that AC off. So I pity whoever has to do it laying on their back. I have done a crank sensor on another 05. Not this one, but another one. They're pretty easy laying on your back. Oh, you don't break. Every 15 minute job is one broken bolt away from being a three day job. So it also looks like we're going to have to take this mounting bracket out of the way too, so why don't I just do that while we're at it.
kind of out of the way. I don't really want to sneak out of there. So, now I just got to get the connector off. And then I can take the Allen bolt that's holding it. Ground straps unhooked. Let's see if we can't fish this easy bracket out here. There's our ECU bracket. It's got some isolator bushings. A couple of them popped off. So you gotta put those back on. Short ones up top, long ones on the bottom. And there's that ground strap. So make sure you hook that back up. Oh, sweet. Did that get us better access? Hopefully. I suppose the right thing to do would have been to unhook the battery and take the connectors off the ECU, but you know, hack mechanic life. So we got this little red tab on this connector. We need to fish off of there somehow so I think it's a five millimeter Allen we're gonna put on there and then I'm gonna get it down here and get a better look at that connector and figure out how to get that disconnected there's this red tang on there and I'm not sure which way to pry it because I can't really see the guy on the YouTube says it's a five millimeter you think he was right probably not four and a half is too small Let's try a five millimeter. Money in the bank. I'm just gonna figure out how to turn that. Hmm. I would suggest taking your ECU out. Disconnecting the battery because it's right in the farkin' way. How in the French? We're gonna do this. Oh man. We finally got her out of there. The Allen bolt, that is. Give her a little twist and a little pry action. There. I sure hope this one we got is the right one and that it fixes it. So, what's the deal with this tab on here? There, she's finally walking out. Maybe that's all the further she's got to go. Yep. All right. There. Well, according to the camera, it's been about 35 minutes. That's not fun getting it out of there. Um, obviously, if I did it again, it'd be easier, but... Three pin, three pin. Looks like she's got the same angle of the dangle. Let's smear a little oil on that seal and we'll stab it right back in. Hopefully it clears up our code. Goodness. I bet it goes back the other way faster. I just jinxed myself, didn't I, by saying that? Where'd the hole at? Put some freaking hair on it, Grandpa would say. You know those jobs where you can't see what you're doing, you're just imagining what you're doing? That's one of these. Oh my gosh, you can't see deadly. Now we just gotta hook our connector back up. Should be easy, right? I don't think. And then push our red pin in. Ha, huh, we're on the home stretch. Now we gotta put our ECU bracket in. We got her back in there, took us about an hour. I would say for the 
whatever the shops around you charge 100 150 bucks an hour just take it in and get it done because if you don't have a lift and a lot of patience and uh flexible hands and a whole bunch of tools it's not fun for 150 bucks i would say take it in somewhere five millimeter allen wrench and socket and wobble and 10 millimeter and a 10 millimeter ratchet wrench and a cheater wrench for said allen wrench and a 10 millimeter deep and a 10 millimeter mid length and a ratcheting electric ratchet thing and a small little pliers we didn't use them and a needle nose pliers the hammer for this and a pick and a tiny screwdriver i mean nothing too crazy but if you had to do that on your back that would suck uh, if i were to do it again i would probably unhook the battery disconnect the ecu and just get the ecu out of the way uh, don't forget the ground strap and now that i know how to pull out that red retaining tab that would have been easier to get the allen bolt out with that connector out of the way because it's kind of a bulky connector now let's see if it pops right off if we fixed it that's what we need to know mm -hmm. 205 997 so just a hair under 206 see this thing lights right off can't really go by the check engine light because it only would come on about a quarter of the time maybe even less oh it's doing it right there son of a biscuit Let's see if it revs up Maybe you just did it that one time because it's new. Well, maybe we'll drive it a little bit, see if it comes out of it. I don't know what to say. Silly come aparts. Well, there you have it, how to swap a camshaft position sensor in an 05 Dodge Ram 3500 with a 5.9 turbo diesel. You want to go for an RIDE? Yeah, I suppose we could do that. Hopefully that fixes your problem. Maybe mine will just go away. I don't know. Exciting. Okay, you kick the stands out from underneath the hoist and we'll go for a rip. Good kid. Thanks for watching. Check out our other videos. Get yourself some Mortsky merch. Click the link down below. Remember, doesn't matter how you get it done, as long as you're having fun. Comment what your tow vehicle is if you got a tow vehicle. Hopefully somebody's got like an S10 Blazer or something sweet. That wasn't fun. It's really gonna be not fun if it doesn't fix it. So Duff and I took her for a rip around the block. Hook the trailer back up. It would hesitate when you would shift, like almost like on a quadra bog when it was like, blah, when the four barrels open. But it was like you'd shift, you'd shift and you'd be in the gas and it would like stall and then boom, take off. But it came out of that. We put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven miles on. Well, yeah, because we're at 206006. And now look at this. Starts up. Idle's good. I think she's good to go.